what accusations do to the narcissist. You've been cheating again. I know you have. I found some panties in the back of your car. You have been taking money from the bank account. There's nothing left. What have you done with the money? I saw you kissing him. I know that you're cheating. What do you think you're playing at saying that to our children? How dare you say that about me? We're meant to be co-parenting in a constructive fashion. Who do you think you are? You've gone and done it again. You've taken the last cookie from the cookie jar. You greedy bastard. Accusations. You will have issued many accusations towards the narcissist. Why are you treating me this way? Why did you do that? You're re you, you are really enjoying treating me like this, aren't you? You're playing away. You're stealing money. You're not doing what you should be doing. You will accuse the narcissist of cheating, of taking money, of not pulling their weight in the household, of being unpleasant towards other people, of fouling up social occasions, of spoiling holidays, of treating the children badly. You will accuse the narcissist of changing arrangements. You will accuse the narcissist of being sheer bloody-minded. You will accuse them of being an abuser. And indeed, you may well accuse them of being a narcissist. When you accuse the narcissist, what does that actually do to the narcissist? How does it feel to that narcissist? First of all, it is important to remember that every interaction that you have with a narcissist falls into one of three boxes. And that is explained in the three interactions with the narcissist, which you can find in the Knowledge Vault. Those three boxes are the provision of pure fuel, challenge fuel and wounding. And if you want to understand more about all of that, as I mentioned, access the three assertions of control. So where does an accusation fall? Which of those three boxes does it go into? Many people make the mistake of thinking that when they point that finger and accuse the narcissist of some kind of reprehensible behaviour, and the narcissist goes batshit crazy in response, that they have successfully wounded the narcissist. No, you have not. That is not wounding. What you have done is you have issued challenge fuel to the narcissist. You see, your interaction gives us fuel. If you're stood in front of us jabbing that finger, that is an angry gesture which gives us fuel. It's directed at us. It gives us validation. We matter because you're losing your shit over us. Your narrowed eyes express hatred, antipathy, anger, again caused by and directed at us. You are telling us that we matter. The words that you use are scathing, reprimanding, questioning, occasioned by us and directed at us. We matter. The tone that adopts those words may be a high-pitched shriek of alarm or a guttural growl of anger. Either way, occasioned by us and directed at us, we matter. The look in your eyes of incandescent fury or hurt, frustration, irritation, pleading, it's all fuel, occasioned by us and directed at us. So the gestures, the body language, the look in your eyes, the word that you use, and the tone of those words are all different strands of fuel pouring towards us. Yum, yum. It's a feeding frenzy of fuel. You, through your anger, your annoyance, your hurt, your irritation, your pity, your contempt, are providing us with fuel. So there is no problem there whatsoever. You are readily pumping out that lifeblood towards us. Even if you're doing it down the telephone, the words that you use and the tone adopted will provide us with fuel. Or we can see you on a FaceTime call. We see the facial expressions and the look in your eyes. We hear the words and their tone. Even in a text message or an email, 
The words themselves provide us with fuel. And therefore, your accusation, when it's conveyed to us, will always, always provide us with fuel. Therefore, you do not wound us. However, it isn't all plain sailing for us in light of such an accusation. Because, of course, whilst it goes into the box of challenge fuel, and I've explained one part of that, the fuel, of course, the other part is the challenge. As you know, one of the prime aims is that we must control all individuals that we are interacting with. You must be brought into control and kept under control at all times. In that instance, when you are accusing us of something, you are offending our sense of entitlement. You are suggesting that we can't do as we please. You are holding us to account. And, of course, we are never to be held to be account. You are impinging on what we want to do. You are suggesting that we are wrong. You are suggesting that we are a bad person. You are suggesting that we are not as superior as we believe ourselves to be. And lots of other manifestations also. What this ultimately combines us is this. You are threatening our control. And that cannot be the case. And therefore, what that does to the narcissist is cause the ignition of fury within us. How dare you threaten our control? Now understand, where you do this with an unaware narcissist, they are not thinking, this person is threatening my control, I'm furious about it, I now must do something to assert control over them, and therefore I will select a particular manipulation in order to do that. No. The unaware narcissist is indignant, is angered, is furious is upset, is alarmed, feels crushed, is anxious, is nervous, dependent upon the type of narcissist that they are and what their narcissism utilises as the method by which it motivates the narcissist to assert control over you. In the way that your throat goes dry when you're thirsty, your body is sending a signal to you saying, you're dehydrated, you must now hydrate. If you received no warning signal of that nature, you wouldn't drink as much as you ought to do because you would forget to do it and you wouldn't be moved by something that makes you feel uncomfortable so that you remedy the discomfort by seeking out a drink of water, for example. And thus, your body's signal causes you to react in order to make you do something to the benefit of keeping you alive and fit and well. In the same way, when you're out running and you twist your ankle, it hurts, so you have to stop. Because if you carry it on, you could cause permanent damage to you, yourself. And therefore, pain serves a purpose to halt you engaging in the activity to enable you to repair yourself in whatever form is appropriate. For us, our narcissism creates an emotional response from us, fury, which can manifest as indignance, hatred, an icy fury, cold fury, or lambasting you through heated fury. It might cause the fury to emerge as cold fury through sulking, through playing butt hurt, through turning on the waterworks. But it does all of those things to make the narcissist feel a particular way, and then to think a particular way. So the narcissist responds, and because you're proximate, to assert the first assertion of control over you by, for instance, a middle-mid-range type B narcissist turning on the waterworks and crying. Or an upper lesser type B grabbing you by the throat and telling you to shut the fuck up, or else. When you accuse the narcissist, you affect the narcissist's innate sense of control. And where this is an unaware narcissist, the narcissist does not know that it is the control that's being affected, they feel a sensation created by the narcissism and they are fed a conscious thought that you're out of line or you're a nag or you're just getting on this person's case unnecessarily or you're pestering or that you're crazy 
or that you're making things up. Whatever the narcissism selects in order to motivate the narcissist to act and behave and say certain things to nullify the threat. So it causes the narcissist to dole out a pity play. Thus, the narcissist believes that they're hurt, f believes that they feel sad, and starts to cry, an instinctive response, in order to try and halt your challenge that has been posed through the accusation. Or, with heated ignited fury, the narcissist goes for you physically, believing that you're completely out of line and that you deserve a slap to the chops in order to shut you up. If you then shut up and stop the accusation, the narcissism has succeeded. The threat has been nullified. And the fact that the narcissist felt furious and moved to strike you physically was occasioned to nullify the threat to control. In the same way, as the curl fury emerges as a pity play, the narcissist cries and believes that you're picking on them unnecessarily and says as such, and then you are motivated through your the corruption of your empathic trait of compassion to stop the accusation, then the threat has been nullified. With an aware narcissist, the narcissist recognises that you are threatening our control. And this, of course, still creates a fury, but there will be a different reaction. The greater or ultra may well be able to keep a lid on this fury and respond with charm. What's all this silliness about? Now, come now. Let's sit down here. Let's sit down here and discuss this like adults. Now, tell me what's on your mind. No, 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 that's not right. Come now. Let's get this sorted out and then let me take you to bed and give you an HG special and all of this can be forgotten about. In other instances, it might be the where a narcissist decides that a silent treatment is appropriate. Or, in some instances, physical violence might ensue. But the aware narcissist knows that it's a threat to control being posed by the accusation, feels the ignition of fury, but knows what is going on and knows why they respond in the way that they do. The unaware narcissist does not have that insight. Your accusations to the narcissist therefore provide us with fuel, but they threaten our sense of control and mean that we must then assert control, more usually through the direct assertion of control. In some instances, it might be through the indirect assertion of control, smearing or triangulation, or the third assertion of control, withdrawal. And if you want to understand more about those various assertions of control, you can obtain the three assertions of control from the Knowledge Vault also. Your accusations don't feel pleasant to the narcissist. For the unaware narcissist, it creates an emotion that they believe is genuine, but is being fabricated by the narcissism to cause the narcissist to act in a particular way. They'll feel anxious, they'll feel the fury, they'll feel uncomfortable, they'll feel on edge, they'll feel paranoid. With the aware narcissist, it links to the manifestation of cold or heated fury, but in some instances that might be controlled and won't manifest as the Aware narcissist selects an alternative method of manipulation in order to nullify the threat. But either way, your accusations are unwelcome. Yes, they provide us with fuel, but they are unwelcome because you have the audacity to threaten our control. Of course, the greater and the ultra invariably find it quite amusing that you do this, given our expertise to at nullifying the threat. But to the lesser and the mid-range narcissist, your accusations are wholly unwanted, wholly unmerited, and make their life difficult, unpleasant, and in some instances, bordering on unbearable. Of course, from your part, you must bear in mind that whilst this is the outcome for the narcissist, by engaging in this manner, you're giving us fuel. You are likely to suffer an adverse consequence because we will have to nullify your threat in some form which will be unpleasant for you. You are interacting with the narcissist and thus increasing your emotional thinking. And it may also lead, dependent on where you are in the dynamic with the narcissist, to further hoovering. And you must be aware of those things. And therefore, whilst it is tempting to, of course, pepper the narcissist with accusations, particularly if you understand now that it causes problems for the narcissist, ultimately you are still playing the game with us. And what you'd be far better off doing is realising he's cheated, I know it, but there's no point me putting it to him because he'll deflect it, deny it, etc. as part of the defence mechanism. I'll only end up giving him fuel, I won't get the resolution that I want, 
I will suffer an adverse consequence, either frustration at not getting the resolution or something worse by way of which the narcissist lashes out at me. And of course, I'm increasing my emotional thinking, which means that I won't use logic and means I could be caught in this dance for longer. Tempting as it is to make accusations to the narcissist, tempting as it is because you know the effect that it has upon us, you should refrain from doing so because ultimately you end up with the devil's pitchfork slamming into your side. That, however, is what your accusations do to the narcissist. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.